All right, guys, here is the update nobody asked for. Literally no one. I had one guy comment on the last video, but here I am. Here we are. We're back at it again uh, with the white vans. <clears throat> Daniel. Okay, so last time I believe I only had uh, one, two, three, four, maybe five spiders, right? Right? Get this. Now I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven spiders and a scorpion. So I'm going to take you right through it. Uh, first off, I understand <clears throat> you're currently looking at a heat rock with a water dish on it. That's to up the humidity for my tropical species. Okay? Uh, ambient humidity. I don't water the enclosures. As you can see, the substrate's super dry. Boom. Dry substrate. Look at that iPhone zoom. Flex gang. Uh, super dry substrate. And that is because they need a ton of cross ventilation and ambient humidity. Yes. But uh, this is an avicularia, avicularia uh, pink toe. And this is a Mantinique pink toe or a Carabina versicolor. Formerly Avicularia versicolor brings me to my next point. These two species in the classic hobby suffered from something called the SADS, S A D, Sudden Avicularian Death Syndrome, and that's because they're from a very tropical region of the world down in South America. No, I don't know the name of the country. Sorry. But it's extremely tropical. There's a lot of humidity, right? A whole bunch of humidity. However, a lot of people didn't take into account that they're 15 feet off the ground in trees with a consistent breeze blowing through. So yes, they are exposed to humidity, but it is not directly in their environment like, say, a terrestrial species. That right there is my uh, Brachmapelma abelossum Nicaragua. No idea gender. Uh, juvenile, about three and a half inches, maybe four. Brilliant eater. Uh, couldn't be happier. You see this? I bought this coconut at the store, I ate it, and I made it into a hide. All you gotta do is bake it and boil it, and then bake it again, it's good to go. For dry species. All right. But anyway, ton of cross ventilation, that's why there's a water dish on a heat rock. It's slight evaporation, ups the humidity a little bit. Now, don't judge me, I have one of these little twin pack thingy-majigs. It is just a reference, just a reference to see where I'm at. I don't trust the numbers, they're not specific, I get that. Plus. It's 12 inches away from these guys who I know are in a different environment because as you can see there's a heat map there That's because these are my slings. I keep I want to keep them at a higher temperature than I want to keep my juveniles or my almost adult scorpion And that's because they will grow faster and they will eat more now Why do I want them to grow faster? So they do neat shit like this, which is molt. Look at that Carabina versicolor first molt, first molt with me from about a quarter inch sling now I would like to think she's about a half inch uh, I know that's a big jump. Uh, no, 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 no. She was probably like half of a half inch or two quarter inch, and now she's probably like half inch. Uh, diagonal leg span. That's how we measure it here. All right, moving right along. And here we have another Brachmapelma abelossum Nicaragua form that I can't see, so you can't either. It's in there, I promise. Got this thing as literally less than a quarter of an inch. It molted two, three days ago. Uh, ate a cricket leg this morning. Fantastic, amazing, beautiful, love it. And then in here we have Robin. She was in my last video. She is a Gramostola Kiraguay slash Poultra. Nobody knows the difference other than the Kiraguay turns a dark brown in pre-molt, whereas the Poultra turns a gray in pre-molt. That's it, that's the only difference we got. Same basic setup and enclosure and everything, as you can see, also dry substrate. They don't need moist substrate. I do up humidity when they're in pre-molt because it will help them with the molt. You won't get stuck legs and pedipelts and fangs and things of that nature if you up the humidity. But you got to pay attention to your spiders to know when they're in pre-molt. And then down here, I have my uh, Chromatopelma cyanio pubescens or green bottle blue. And the only reason I knew what it was is because I left this sticker here because I don't know how to say the fucking name. And she's great. She's about an inch and a half. Eats like a pig. I haven't fed her in two weeks because she looks like a tick. And she refuses to molt. Uh, arid species. Kept very dry. Heavy webbers. I put a lot of stuff in there for her to web on. There's a 3D printed red skull in there. There's a little wooden hut. There's some leaves. There is a small water dish. Uh, I only top that off about once every other week. Because they are a low humidity species. That's why she's way down here. Not up here where this humidity is going to rise. You feel me? Alright, moving right on along, and in here, 
We have a P. Muticus. I am pretty sure that's the name. It's the OBT or orange bitey thing. And off in the back left is where she's built a dirt hut because I did not include a hide. I thought she was going to hide under there where that webbing is going from that goat jawbone to the ground. Uh, eh, wrong. She built a dirt tunnel over there. That's fine. Uh, she's going to be comfy like that. That's how she wants to live. And over here we have young... Uh, what is it? Uh, I named her something funny, and I can't put it in the right order now. Okay, no, it's Dwayne Eugene Johnson, right? Because Dwayne Johnson, The Rock, Scorpion King. You following? Eugene, like Mr. Krabs, because she has big, meaty claws. All right, and you already saw this one. Oh, on setup. Uh, you can see the tape here, right? This is a very humid, tropical species. It needs a lot of humidity. It needs moist substrate. Top ventilation is terrible for moist substrate because it just evaporates right out. There it goes. There it goes. It doesn't matter how many times a day you water it. It'll be dry the next day. So I taped up most of the top ventilation, left the sides for just, you know, air because they still need to breathe, right? Air, important. And I side drilled some holes in the sides and in the back. And as you can see, inch and a half, two inches of substrate. Maybe three inches. I added quite a bit, but that's because they like to burrow. There's a flat piece of bark in there, and that's because they like to hide in kind of a crevice and then make a burrow out of that. That's what I've seen. That's what I've seen. I'm not, like, I could be wrong. And in the center, my avicularia, avicularia, very tropical species. However, heavy cross ventilation is super necessary, along with the Caribbean of Versicolor Mantinique Pink Toe. They need the cross ventilation, regardless of how much web they do or whatever, cross ventilation is key to keep that species alive. Everybody in here is kept between 70 and 90 degrees, depending on the fluctuation throughout the day. All of that is well within the ranges of their native habitat, all of them. I made sure to only buy species that I could support that way because I can only do what I can do in this tiny apartment without having crazy exoterra bioactives and all that kind of stuff. All right, so this was uh, car stuff and stuff, kind of funny. I haven't posted a car video in like a year, year and a half. But and stuff, that's where we're at right now. So uh, hit me up, like and subscribe. I don't know, collab with your boy maybe? You hear something you like? No, that's fine. Uh, hit, hit the thumbs up, people that did subscribe. I think there's like four, four subscribers. <laughs> so uh, I don't know, turn the bell on so you can laugh when I trip over my words and stuff. Oh, shit. One last thing, I see a tiny fan, you see a tiny fan, that is to simulate the airflow that these guys would get in the treetops. Only time I turn that on is when I see the humidity spike super high. I'm talking like it gets to 80% uh, because I live in Washington and it rains here and I leave my windows open at summertime, all that humidity rushes in or we have a crab boil or something like that, bunch of humidity in the house. I kick the fan on, it blows air across so that way it doesn't get stagnant and choke them out, their book lungs can't. They just can't, so they just die. And that's not what I want to happen. All right, that's all I have for you. Happy 10 minute video of me ranting and you looking at a cardboard box full of arachnids. I don't know about full, but there's a good amount of them in there, you know? All right, have a good one.